I previously filled up this cell of the battery with water and then I tried to charge it and the charger didn't want to charge it and I thought I heard boiling so I decided to just let things sit for a while and do some research. A boiling sound in batteries is not uncommon. If you look on them they'll say danger about explosion and when you are charging batteries they do release some amount of hydrogen. It's not great that I can hear that sound but it's also not the end of the world. This is a great reason to charge stuff outdoors. Um, I am indoors now, but at least it's a big open space. So I'm now gonna try to charge up this battery and see if I can get charge on it. I know this battery is low. It's probably not in great shape and may never fully recover, but let's give it a shot. So I've selected the PB, the lead acid battery profile here. And because I know this battery is pretty low on charge, I'm gonna start it off at a really slow charge rate, 0 0.5 amps six volts, the three P there is because there's three cells in the battery. So that's correct. So get this started. It's doing a battery check. And it looks like there's enough voltage in there that it was not gonna complain. When I tried to do this earlier, it said the voltage was too low. And so I had to put it on the manual mode and just drop about uh, 0.3 amps in there for a few minutes just to bring the voltage level up to the minimum level. It's got that safety check to make sure you haven't picked a wildly incorrect profile and that you're not going to accidentally say charge a you know four volt battery as if it was a six volt but when the battery voltage gets too low it doesn't realize that you just have a battery in poor shape so you have to trick it sometimes so at half an amp per hour for a this is 225 amp hour battery is going to take a very long time to charge. So eventually I'm going to have to come back and put more amperage in there. But one of the reasons why I might have heard that bubbling was just because it was so low and I was trying to put in enough current at once that it was just more than the battery was happy to take then. So I'm going to start it off gentle and then once this gets up to a healthier charge level, I will crank up the amperage some. So definitely on the low side. This first part of the charge profile is going to try to bring it up to about 7.35 volts uh, at whatever my constant current is. Right now about half an amp, but I'll change that later. And then it's going to, once it actually reaches that set voltage, then it will hold that voltage but start putting less and less current in. Um, so this is going to take a while. We're definitely not going to sit here and watch do this, so time to move on to the next thing. One thing there is no shortage of around here is spiders. This guy was hanging out on one of my lights. I'm pretty sure that at any given time, there's always at least one spider within view. You just gotta look for it. Fortunately, despite all the many spiders around here, there's really only two that you have to be concerned about. The rest are not venomous to people. One is the brown recluse, which is very rare. James thinks maybe he saw one the other day, but there's a lot of spiders that look like that, so couldn't get a super positive ID. And the brown recluse tends to run away. And then the other one is the black widow, which I also don't know if we really have around here. And they tend to stay very reclusive in their little webs, and they're pretty easy to identify. So this guy crawling around here is definitely not oops, anything to be concerned about. The biggest problem I've had with spiders here is they're all super shy. So if you see a really cool one, it's really hard to get a picture of it before it runs away. This guy's doing his best to avoid me. So I guess he's got orange spots and these cool green eyes. I don't know if you can see them in the video. Also looks like he's a jumper, I saw him jump across one of the gaps. Got another one, big one hanging out over here. 
can see the wasp there on the right for comparison size. Got this big old, let's see if I can get my foot in there without scaring him off. See, it's a pretty big spider. If you know what sort of spider that was we were just looking at, let me know. In the meantime, we're going to look at this thing. You may remember some number of weeks ago I glued this up using this PL300, which was designed to be used on foam board, which is what this is. It's designed to stick it to the walls. So I wanted to give it a shot and see if it'd be useful for making fillets and also for adhering the canvas to the foam. So, and then I did it two ways. I had just the plain stuff and then I also tried thickening it with some, uh, I think I used the 407 high density stuff. So now let's evaluate how well this did. One of the things, one of the most common ways that this whole lamination is gonna fail is simply if the canvas comes off of the foam on the inside. So we wanna see ideally that this stuff is stuck onto the foam so well that when I try to peel it off, it actually rips the foam itself. If it's adhered strong enough that it actually tears the foam when I try to move it, then you can't get any stronger. It doesn't matter if it bond, bonded twice as well to the foam if the foam itself is ripping apart, right? Um, so I'm going to just pull on this and so far this is coming off super easy. So that is definitely not a stronger bond than the foam itself. This is actually coming off ridiculously easy. So not too happy with that. Yeah, I mean that that's not something I would want to use to really hold things together. And we can try the thickened version as well. It's not doing any better. Uh, it's, it's maybe stiffer, but not in any sort of, I mean, it's a little thicker and it's a little stiffer, but not in any really interesting way. This stuff just comes off. One thing we can see if I can get the light right, but I poked little holes in here and if I look on the back of this I can see that material did get into the holes. So they did act a little bit like nails, which is good. We talked about a lot of times in re the real situations what's going to happen is it's going to want to slide that way, not necessarily peel straight off. And so if it had had better adherence that also would have helped prevent the sliding action. Let's also see how it held onto the canvas. The canvas it did no better. The canvas comes off completely intact. And I think this side is the thickened stuff. So yeah, that, that did not hold up well. And then there's also the question for this joint, how much integrity is this giving to this joint? So this is definitely holding on. So in terms of making a strong joint here, this is doing okay. So that's, that's actually pretty strong. I'm surprised given how easily it came off these other areas, how well it's holding these pieces together. I think what I'm going to try to do now is actually glue a piece of this canvas back on here because if this makes a strong joint but doesn't hold the canvas well, it could be okay if I did that and then came over and put the canvas over it with the glue. So I'm going to give that a shot. So first I'm going to use this coarse grit sandpaper, just rough up the surface a bit. My fingertips hot there. Next I'll come and oops, jab myself with this pointy thing. And so I'm going to do two experiments here. I'm going to first just adhere the canvas directly to this and then I'm also going to adhere it to this and see how it compares. This glue is a couple years old and was also subjected to cold weather so 
I don't know how good it still is. So we're just gonna try it and see. This is one of the reasons for doing the control side. If it doesn't bond over here, then it doesn't, then the failure on the other side doesn't really mean it was bad. It could just mean that the glue was bad, not that the idea was bad. I guess I don't have anything else to do on this until it dries, so we'll come back to this another day.